I talk to people when they're in the middle of their tragedy. I lay out a scene that I have no idea what it looks like and I'm basically doing it from what they're telling me. But I also have to have the ability to keep it together. Send an ambulance, please. Someone's been shot. Okay. Stay on the line with me while I get them started, okay? Is this a Okay, house? sure. Yes, it's a home. Okay. And are you with the patient now? I'm not. My, my son is. Okay. It's my grandson. Okay. Where is he at? Are they outside? So he calls me and he yes, says, he he right? Lisa, EJ's been shot. And I, I was like, what? And he says, EJ's been shot. <clears throat> and I don't think he's going to make it. And I just start questioning. And he's like, can you, can you come get me and take me to the hospital? They're not going to let me ride with him. And I don't have a ride right now. And panic mode sets in. And then I guess being a dispatcher, a call taker, you kind of get it back together as best as you can because I'm thinking I've got to get behind the wheel of the car to get where I need to go to, so that we can make it to the hospital. And I think it was at that moment that I realized that I was no longer the call taker or the dispatcher in charge at this point. I was on the other side of the headset. I was the victim. Although I didn't make that 911 call, I was feeling what these callers are feeling. When they call, when they call me, and I realized at that point that, hey, this is my personal tragedy. I don't have to keep it together right now. I was a little apprehensive on coming back to work, and the reason why is, I know what CPR sounds like. I know what CPR is. Uh, I done it many times but in the back of my head I kept thinking about my I call him my child because he was like my child and I think about his father giving him CPR. They, They're coming to y'all. Are, are they? Are they coming quick? Yes, sir. They this was done. You know, he, he was just outside. We don't even know why. This doesn't even happen out here. You still breathing? Okay. Let's let's go ahead and start CPR. Okay. If he's gasping for air, we need to make sure he's getting enough oxygen. Do you, do you know CPR? I'm going to tell you how to do it. So. You, I had to refocus. I had to, I had to have counseling um, so that I could still be the best that I could be in my job, in this profession, and keep my sanity at the same time. I've got to start feeling again. I, I have to start being human again. and. 27 years of putting all that to the side, uh, yeah, it, it made me realize that it's time to hang up the headset, so to speak. I, I've lost many family members since being here, but when it's a a violent death, an unnecessary death, and it's a kid. 
it just hits you a little bit differently. 